Hi everyone, I'm Rinsey and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. So today I thought I would talk about ghost stories. This is a thing that kind of happened on accident for me. I've noticed recently that a lot of the books that I've been picking up to read over the last couple of weeks have all had like ghost or spirit elements woven into the stories and I just thought it was really interesting because some of these books are like straight up ghost stories. Some of them are just like contemporary fiction books or literary fiction books that have like these spirit elements in them and it just like happened to work out that I was reading all of these at the exact same time or one right after another. So that I would talk about them a little bit. I'm also someone who is like a big old baby so I don't really like do the thing of like picking up scary books around Halloween. In general I try to avoid scary books and so these have like varying degrees of like leaning into the horror and supernatural versus like just having those elements incorporated into the story in some way. So I thought I would talk about all of these books and then the way that I'm going to talk about them I'm going to be going from like the most kind of traditional ghost story type of book to like the ones that are more just like literary fiction or contemporary fiction that have some of these elements woven into it. So that way no matter where you fall on the spectrum of enjoying these books or not really enjoying these types of books you can you know find a book that kind of fits your desire. All right first up starting with the one that is a straight up just ghost story. It's The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. This is a book that I really really enjoyed and again I'm not someone who reads a lot of horror or reads a lot of like ghost stories in general but this one really appealed to me and I think that if you're someone who enjoys sort of suspense books and this is probably going to be up your alley even if you don't normally read ghost stories but this is one that is 100% a ghost story. Like there's no questioning <laughs> sort of like maybe they're not real sort of thing. No like in this book they are 100% real. So this is like I said kind of like a suspense horror book. You are following two different characters in two different timelines. One of the timelines is set during the 1980s and you are following this character named Viv who has left her home. She tells her mom that she's going to move to New York City and become an actress but she's like hitchhiking and realizes she's in that great situation. So she gets out of the car and ends up at Fell, New York which is a small town in New York and she ends up working at the Sundown Motel and working the night shift at the motel and while she's working the night shift she realizes that there are some things that are weird happening at the motel but also like while she's just living in this new town she starts to find out about these different like mysteries and crimes that are happening in town and starts looking into things and then one day Viv disappears. The other storyline takes place in 2017 and you are following this character named Carly. She is the niece of Viv and she never really knew a whole lot about her aunt Viv because her mom didn't really talk about her a whole lot but her mother has recently passed away Way and she's decided that she's going to go to Fell, New York to find out what exactly happened to her. She ends up getting an apartment with another girl who's from the area and she actually ends up taking that same night shift job at the Sundown Motel as well. And as she starts investigating what happens to her Aunt Viv, uh, she also notices some of the weird things that are going on. So yes, like I said at the top, this is like straight up a ghost story. The reason why I feel like I was able to handle it is because it feels more like a suspense mystery with like just ghost elements thrown into it. The ghosts are an important part of the story to a certain extent, but it's not really the entirety of the story. Um, There is like kind of a mystery that Viv starts investigating and that has to do with what happens to her. And so it's feels more like a mystery than a horror book or anything along those lines and to me like the scariest part of this book wasn't even the ghost parts it was all of the mystery stuff because that gets real tense at times. <laughs> So yeah, I really enjoyed this though. So I definitely recommend this if you are a fan of suspense books. Next I have The House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig and this is a basically like why a horror fantasy retelling of the 12 dancing princesses fable. So in this story you are following this character named Anna Lay who is one of 12 in this family or there were 12 of them all together with her mother and father I believe and this family has been like plagued by tragedy because their mom and now three of the sisters have died and so they basically spent like the past four years completely in mourning because someone in the family keeps dying but as Annalie starts to look into things a little bit and now that the third sister has passed away she starts to wonder if maybe these weren't accidents. There were certain things in the beginning that made them think that like this just happened to be like bad luck on their family 
in like a metaphorical sense because like their mother died in childbirth one of their sisters like fell from a high height and one of them like was starting to have like mental breakdowns and things like that and so they think that that just happened to lead to her eventual death but this third sister that has just died it looks like she fell from a cliff but Annalie is like looking into things and she starts to find out that there was someone like a guy in her life that she was potentially going to run away with. She starts to wonder, did this guy have something to do with her death? Did someone find out that she was with someone else and then push her off the cliff? All of these different things. And sort of while all of this is happening, um, the family decides that it's time to like stop continuously mourning and they decide to throw a birthday party for a set of triplets in this family because it's their 16th birthday and they would use this as an occasion to like have all of the daughters in this family you know come out in society and be ready for like suitors and things along those lines and so like the 12 dancing princesses comes about because these girls start going to balls and dances every single night which has its own twist to it which I won't give away. So yes this is kind of like a step down from the Sundown Motel because there are ghosts and spirits in this story because the I think it's the youngest daughter in this family believes that she's seeing all of the dead relatives in her life so like her dead mother and her dead sisters and she's like drawing these like really scary pictures of them doing really horrific things and Annalise I think is the only one in the family who knows about this and she believes that she's starting to see these spirits and ghosts as well and so she's starting to wonder what exactly is going on what happened to her sisters and her mother is someone out to get all of them that sort of thing so this is a book where it's like a step down because you're reading this book not really sure what's real and what's not and I'm obviously not going to tell you <laughs> the answer to that but I really enjoyed this book and I think that this is a really good like creepy dark fantasy book. It is a bit of a slow burn but I enjoy slow burn young adult fantasies so this was completely my jam and I think it, that the use of ghosts and spirits in here also explores other things such as like grief and mourning and loss and all of those different complicated things that happen when someone you love has passed away and especially when multiple people you know has passed away. So yeah I again just really enjoyed this book and I think that if you're someone who enjoys sort of slow burn darker young adult fantasy books this is one worth putting on your radar. All right next I have Bailey's Cafe by Gloria Naylor and this is a book where Again, it's a step down from the others in terms of ghost story because this one is not really explicit about ghosts and things along those lines. So the way this story is set up, Bailey's Cafe is like a place that exists in New York but doesn't really exist. Like they say in the book that it doesn't have like an actual physical location. It kind of just appears when you need it to sort of situation. And the people who come to Bailey's Cafe are people who are basically on the down and out. They need like a sort of refuge sort of thing. And so the way like this book describes it it's described as more like magical and mystical kind of thing but you could also kind of view this as like almost a purgatory type of type of situation as well because they do make reference to the fact that the back door leads to darkness and like when people are ready they'll step through that door and like never return and things like that so this feels a little bit like it's treating Bailey's Cafe as this almost in-between space of a uh, place where people can heal and find answers and you know kind of get closure in certain situations because all of the people who pass through here again have been through like really difficult or horrific circumstances or are considered like outsiders you know there's people in here who have been abused and people in here who have been like poor and done like a lot of different things in order to just be able to pay the bills or people in here who choose to live a different type of lifestyle and have been ridiculed for it, things along those lines. So this one has like less to do with like ghosts and spirits and stuff like that. And it's more like the collection of stories about all of these people who have just happened to find Bailey's Cafe. But again, Bailey's Cafe is not a real place, so to speak. So it feels like spiritual in that sort of sense, if that makes sense. All right. And then finally, the book that kind of falls into more like the contemporary fiction, literary fiction spectrum, but has like ghosts and spirits woven into it is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. Um, this is the highly anticipated follow up to Station Eleven that I know a lot of people are really excited about. And I was like, kind of just surprised to see that this one also had ghosts or spirits woven into it. Um, I'm not going to do 
like a full breakdown of how it all works, uh, partially because it also isn't completely explained how it all works. But you follow a lot of different characters in here and you follow them through like various points of their life and there are certain ones who you see them as they are basically like on the decline and they start to see ghosts or spirits of people in their past. It feels very like Christmas carol-y in that sense because you know, there's one character in here who, you know, it's not a spoiler because it says it on the blurb, basically runs a Ponzi scheme. And so he starts to see like the spirits of the people that he like ripped off. There are people who like committed suicide because like they lost their entire life savings. And so he starts to see the spirits of them as well. Um, but there's also other characters in here who start to see like ghosts and spirits and things like that. And so this one is at the bottom of the list because again, it's not stated explicitly in any sort of way, sort of if these ghosts or in spirits are considered real or if they're just like you know hallucinations guilty consciences things along those lines but there's also like an element to this because like you can kind of tell like by the cover and the way the glass hotel itself which is like an actual place in this book the way it's described it has this sort of like ghost and fable and haunting sort of atmosphere to it all and then there's also sort of like the metaphorical ghosts that people are haunted by you know things that have happened in their past that continue to plague them through various points in their life and things along those lines but yeah there are certain points where it is like the characters are legitimately not legitimately but you know are seeing people who have already passed away and so in that sense like they're seeing ghosts but whether or not in this book they're actual ghosts or it's just like a manifestation of something that's happening in their head you know it's not really explained explicitly but they Emily St. John Mandel uses that sort of idea and style to explore the choices that these characters have made and how they feel about it now that time has passed. So those are the four books I wanted to talk to you all about today. Let me know down in the comments below whether or not ghost stories are your thing or not and sort of like how you feel about the various ways ghosts and spirits are used in books. Um, if you're someone who like prefers your ghosts to stay in like straight up ghost stories, if you like it when ghosts and spirits are used in more like contemporary literary fiction to be a larger metaphor for things and all of of that sort of stuff. And if you have any recommendations of some books that you enjoy that have like elements of ghosts and spirits woven into it, definitely leave that down in the comment section as well. So yeah, that's all I have for this week and I will see you all next week. Bye!